This is the final lecture which completes the introduction and the preliminary analysis of second law of thermodynamics. In the next set of lectures, we will look into entropy in much greater detail. So the last topic we want to cover in the, is, in a way, it's the end of the beginning of second law of thermodynamics. So the last topic is Carnot refrigerator at heat pump. You should have a lot of intuition uh, on this topic because we have spent quite some time in looking at heat engines. So a refrigerator and a heat pump are just heat engine in the run in reverse manner. So while a heat engine, you take up heat from high temperature reservoir, convert some part of it into work and reject some part of the heat to a low temperature reservoir. That's what we, we were looking at in a heat engine, right? So the last lecture, for example, depending upon temperature in the absolute Kelvin scale, we can give a bound for efficiency of heat engine. And then the typical heat engine, which you see in real life, has lesser efficiency than a reversible Carnot heat engine. So there are irreversibilities like friction and so on, which makes these real practical heat engine to have lesser efficiency than this. But if someone claims that they have a heat engine that is more than that of with the efficiencies more than that of a reversible heat engine, you can right away uh, say that is fiction. Okay, there is really no heat engine that has ever been developed and uh, which has greater efficiency than a reversible heat engine. So the emphasis has been on the te temperature of the high temperature reservoir. The greater that temperature, the more or the quality of thermal energy available to you is higher. Because all of work can be converted to heat, we can say work is of highest quality, 100% quality. But the quality of thermal energy available to you increases with an increase in high temperature of the high temperature reservoir. As I said, that Carnot refrigerator or heat pump is just the heat engine run in the opposite direction. Okay, so the objective here is not in thermal energy to work conversion. The objective here is twofold. Uh, depending upon the objective, we either call it a refrigerator or we call it a heat pump. So what does a refrigerator do? Refrigerator, the purpose is you want to remove heat from a low temperature reservoir. And then some work is applied to the refrigerator. And from the first law balance, you can see this is some heat is this given off to the high temperature reservoir. Okay, so the objective of a refrigerator is to remove heat from a low temperature reservoir and give it to some high temperature reservoir. Whereas for the objective of a heat pump is that you want to supply heat to some place. Okay, so that can be a, a winter a room in winter. So you want to keep that winter room warm. Okay, so the heat pump pumps heat to a place. Whereas a refrigerator takes off heat from some particular place, okay? So the objectives are different, but the working principles are pretty much the same. So <coughs> depending upon the objective, we can define the coefficient of performance. You don't use the term efficiency because this coefficient of performance can be greater than one. So you use different terms. Coefficient performance of a refrigerator is given by this quantity because what is the objective? The focus is on how much heat is removed from the low temperature reservoir. 
Okay, so you end up with this formula. The focus of a, a heat pump is to supply heat to a particular place. So the focus is on QH. Focus on refrigerator is QL. Okay, so depending on that, the formula is slightly different, uh, but the working principle is just one and the same. So the reversible refrigerator will have the highest coefficient of performance. Okay, that is the work input, necessary work input to take out heat from a low temperature reservoir is least in the case of a refer reversible refrigerator. But the real refrigerators will have other non-idealities. Okay, so like again, friction and finite temperature, heat transfer across a finite temperature difference and all these things. Because of that, the coefficient of a irreversible refrigerator is always less. So if you want to improve your refrigerator, you have to compare your performance of this refrigerator against the performance of an ideal reversible refrigerator. If somebody says that for a given low temperature reservoir at a high temperature reservoir, they can operate a refrigerator which has a greater coefficient of performance compared to that of a reversible refrigerator, you can right away reject it. That's an impossible refrigerator, okay? It's a magic refrigerator that doesn't occur in reality. So these formula are valid for any heat engine and a re uh, refrigerator. It doesn't need to be reversible refrigerator or a reversible heat pump. Okay? The, the same formula is applicable for an irreversible refrigerator also. But for a reversible refrigerator or reversible heat pump, you can have other set of formula based on just the temperature of the low temperature reservoir and the high temperature reservoir. Okay, so you can have equivalent. So all these six are analogous to the way we analyze the heat, the mathematical formula and so on, because the working principle is just one of the same. So again, extending similar kind of argument that we saw in heat engine, you can have three kinds of refrigerator, for example, so if your coefficient of performance is less than that of a reversible refrigerator, you have an irreversible refrigerator. If your coefficient of performance is claimed to be greater than that of a reversible refrigerator, you have an impossible refrigerator. Okay, so similar uh, classification was also seen in heat engine. So with this, we complete this topic. It's a, it was a brief lecture. And we move on to an even more interesting uh, topic, entropy. We will spend quite a few lectures in analyzing uh, entropy. Uh, with this, we finish, complete the end of the beginning of second law.